In a recent community post, we mentioned that we got a PlayStation 1 for 50 yen. It was labelled as junk, but will it work? It rattles a little, but will that be a problem? Let's give it a test. We're going to use one of the HDMI adapters for video output and one of my favourite games, Ridge Racer Revolution. It loads up with slight stuttering. Looking good. Oh dear. Leaving it for a few seconds, we can actually play the game. But it seems like there's some slight problem with the optical drive. If we exit out and then restart the game, it seems to load without any issue. With the drive being slightly noisy and unreliable, I thought maybe why not open this up? Perhaps we can pinpoint the problem and fix it for good. So here's my working PlayStation 1. And let's quickly compare it to the PlayStation junk. Even before using a screwdriver, we can see there is a lot more resistance with the spinner. And this one rattles. On the bottom, there are six screws, which we can undo with a posi driver. Being careful with the units, we can now pull open the case. We can then brush away any dust. I'm just gonna give it a slight clean. We can now unplug the data cable, then slightly offset the drive so we can easily pull out the power cable. To get access to the internals of this drive, there are two tiny screws which we must take out. This cover then slides off. Use compressed air to clean it up. Before we carry on, we're going to cover the lens. We don't want this getting mugged up. We're going to use some silicon grease for these small cocks. Use a cotton bud to spread it around a little. Then use the other end to clean these rails. Get rid of any dirt before we apply some grease. Lithium is recommended, but we're going to use some Cera grease. I use this on the arcade sticks all the time. Good stuff. Apply it evenly to the rails. And now to have access to the other end of the rail, move the lens down carefully. Then continue with the grease. Now we're done with this side, we're going to turn it over. Then undo the two screws. There are two tiny holes here that we can use to apply oil. If you can, use some sewing machine oil. We're just going to use some 3-in-1, because that's all we got. Also lubricate the motor, there's a very tiny hole here. Then grease up the area here next to the motor. Now we can screw the assembly back together. Add the cover. Make sure the ribbon sits flush and there are two latches on either end. Clip them in properly. Locations being here and here. Now for the two screws. Now with the spinner we can turn it a few times, make sure the oil is doing its job. Now we can put it back together. First we'll start with the power cable and slowly push in the data cable. The 1001 series does have a latch for this. For the moving parts on the outside, we can use some silicon grease, get a few squirts, and here it should be a bit smoother. Nice. Put the cover back on, and let's give it a test drive. We can see here that even without changing the strength of the laser, we can have a nicely moving and grooving PlayStation 1. Now the PlayStation loads up faster, has less skipping, and it's much more quiet. I've just remembered something. After spending many years in Japan, I've actually managed to build up a collection of junk PlayStation 1s. Seriously, I can't help myself. Go to a junk shop, find something cheap, I'll buy it. Now this one I got for 100 yen, and it's the 1001 model. 
which has the extra outputs at the back, known by some as the audiophile model. This is also sold as junk, and yeah, the CD spins up to crazy speeds when the lid is open. The opposite of what it's supposed to do. The PlayStation bought for 300 yen actually works fine. The CD drive is a little noisy, but we can fix this. Let's try the PS1 with the same game. We can already see a problem. The thing just doesn't close. Then we're turning it on. Nothing. Let's see if we can get these working. So this is the 1001 model. And we're going to do the same maintenance that we did earlier. A bit of lube here, a bit of cleaning. Same as before. We already know the 300 model works, so let's go to the smaller PS1. There are six screws underneath. One is hidden by the sticker, but with these screws it's very easy to strip the threads. Make sure to use a lot of torque on the first turn. As we can't close the cover easily, there's a problem with the eject button. We can push the latches on the side and easily pull out the cover. We can use alcohol wipes or silicon lube and clean away the gunk. Yeah, it's pretty dirty in here. Enter the power switch. Just like new. Looking at the optical drive itself, it seems that this has not been used much, but after a quick clean, we can reinsert it. Try it again, nothing happened. Might be worth having a look at the board. The shielding can be taken off very easily. And looking at the back of the board, it seems like there's some leakage or residue near the switch. We could try to clean that up, but I've seen reports of this board's capacitors being kind of leaky. As the optical drive of both of these units are actually similar, we've just switched them over. We're also going to add some contact spray, as the switch for the 1001 kind of sticks a little. Just a couple of squirts should clean it up. Both drives are similar, but not identical. The optical drive of the newer PS1 is slightly larger at the top. To test this without the case, we can insert the game and push in a piece of plastic. There's a switch here. The PlayStation sees that the case is closed and the game works fine. To make the drive fit in this case, we can file down the piece of plastic. Now it fits like a glove. So from all four of these junk PlayStations, one is a bit crap. Let's go for the extra mile and see how well we can clean these up. Let's get these junk stickers off. Then to use some alcohol wipes to get rid of dirt and also the sticker residue. Okay, we can only get so far. So let's try with some washing up liquid. With this model, I'll be a little lazy and just leave this here and only clean the exterior. After giving it a rinse and a dry with a towel, we can use some contact spray on a cotton bud to clean the area around the memory card slots. We can also use this to clean around the edges of the case. The brown board on the left is the power supply. Make sure not to touch these with your fingers or anything metal, especially if it's plugged in. Outside the absence of the PlayStation logo and a few scratches, this one looks pretty damn nice. We didn't even need to use the sink for the second unit. A simple wipe with alcohol tissue is pretty much all we need. But if we're looking at the buttons, they do seem kind of yellow and it kind of ruins the whole look of the case. We can squeeze the clips at the back and use a cotton bud to pop this out. We'll be needing a screwdriver for the other. Only two screws. And the same deal again with the cotton bud. We try cleaning one of these with washing up liquid then giving it a good rinse with warm water. And it did clean it, but it did not remove any of the yellow. We'll try the same thing with the PlayStation 1 Slim. Alcohol wipes. A good clean in the sink. And there is a bit more of a difference here. Surely we can do better. 
When we see white plastics from the 80s and 90s, they're usually a yellow color. This is due to a flame retardant in the material itself. And the way to get rid of it is direct sunlight. This could make the plastic brittle, but we got the things as junk, so who cares? We left this out for about four hours in the sun, and let's see the results. Here's how it looked before, and this is how it looks after a suntan. Compare it to the inside plastic, and it looks brilliant. Look at these buttons, they look great. Let's put this back together. Wow. Now that is an art attack. As I couldn't remember how yellow the buttons looked, I bought another junk PlayStation. The cycle continues. I have a lot of nostalgia attached to the PlayStation 1. Is it just me with this problem? Or can any of you relate? Either way, we could turn junk into gold. Hello, I am John. Patreon people thank you for supporting us, and the 80% of you that want to hear more from John Luke. Sorry that I wasn't in this video. I was sliding around on naked ladies in the shower room. Please visit our Discord for more information. Catch you in the next video. Engage hyperactive hyperdrive in my hot pants. <laughs>